Welcome everyone to Young at Heart, session number 144. I'm Father James DeLucio here in the Paulist Fathers Library in New York City, part of our rectory, to offer you nursery rhymes, stories, songs, poems, Mother Goose, Aesop's fables, limericks, larks, and all things to keep us young at heart. I purchased a new book for us. I was away for the weekend. Well, not away, away from videos for the weekend. I still stayed sequestered here at our rectory in New York City. But I purchased this book. It's called The Annotated African American Folklore, and it's edited by Dr. and Professor Henry Louis Gates, Jr. and Maria Maria Tatar. And you know uh, Professor Dr. Gates. He has many programs on PBS. The most recent, it, I'm in the middle of it, is two-part series on the history of Reconstruction and its impact on African Americans and Americans at large after the Civil War. It's very little known. Most of us didn't study it in school. And it is profoundly enlightening in terms of the systemic racism um, in our country, the unfairness uh, and the cruelty uh, that uh, white men in particular had towards black men in particular. So it's good food for thought. This, of course, is about the African-American resilience and the stories they brought from their own country. Most of the book are from uh, Ghana, Kenya, and other places, South Africa, and there are others that are from the Caribbean, for their traditions are slightly different. But we see how, in their stories, how there's so many overlaps between the European sensibilities of how to navigate the world and, and how to struggle and, and survive uh, with the African experience. The first story that's offered in the book is called How the Sky Gods Stories came to be known as spider stories. A little interesting, but this primary character in many African folk tales, his name is Kowaku Ananse, and I may not be pronouncing it properly, but Kowaku Ananse is not quite a shape shifter, but he's human and he's also a spider. And in the introductions, they explain, obviously spiders are everywhere throughout the world, but in Africa, in the woods, in the jungles, um, there is a real sense of the importance of spiders. They're all different sizes. They have tremendous variety. And those webs, you know, really offer a lot of sense of mystery and beauty. I couldn't help but think of Charlotte's web. So you can kind of... Uh, channel <laughs> a little bit of that story, which is probably far more well known to us. And not only beauty, but also terror. You know, what they capture, especially the large ones, um, they can be an inspiration uh, for people and yet also a terror for humans because they can bite if you walk through their, um, their nets or they come to you at night if you're not well screened <laughs> and so this one seems to be both man and spider it's a little bit of one or more of the other at a given time and uh, so but he's called spider no matter which shape um, he is in and he really does give a sense of how to negotiate the world and its goodness and its evil with its temptations and uh, with its surprises. So I won't read all of the first story. It's a little long. I'll give us about 10 minutes worth of it and we'll pick up with it tomorrow. So let us go to find out a little more of the heritage of our African American and Caribbean brothers and sisters. Are you ready? All right. It's introduced, as many of these stories are introduced, with this little phrase. We do not really mean, we do not really mean, then what we are going to say is true. So it's 
uh, conveying a typical opening line that says that, well, this is probably a lie, but it has some truth in it, which is kind of the basis of all myths, uh, fairy tales, and such. Kawaku Anansi, or Spider, once went to Nyanakopan, the sky god, in order to buy the sky god's stories. The sky god said, Will you be able to buy them? Spider said, I am sure I will be able to buy them. The sky god said, Great and powerful towns like Kokofu, Bekwai, Asumangaya, they have come, but they were unable to purchase them, and you, who are but a mere masterless man, will you really be able to buy them? Well, what is the price of the stories, said Spider. The sky god said, they cannot be bought for anything except Onini the python, Oseba the leopard, Memoita, or Moatia, rather, Moatia the fairy, and Moboro the hornets. Spider said, I will bring some of all of these things, and what's more, I'll add my old mother, Nisa, the sixth child to the lot. The sky god said, Go and bring them then. Spider returned home and told his mother about all that had happened, saying, I wish to buy the stories of the sky god. And the sky god says, I must bring... Onini the python, Oseba the leopard, Moatia the fairy, and Moboro the hornets. And I said I would add you to the lot and give all of you to the god, the sky god. Spider consulted his wife, and her name was Aso, saying, What is to be done that we may capture Omni, Onini, what is to be done that we may capture Onini, the python? Asso said to him, cut off the branch of a palm tree and cut some string creeper as well and bring them back. And Spider came back with them. Asso said, take them to the stream. So Anansi took them and as he was moving along, he said, it's longer than he is. It's not as long as he is. You lie. It is longer than he is. Spider said, There he is, lying over there. Python, who had overheard the imaginary conversation, said, What's all this about? Spider said, it's my wife, Asso, who is arguing with me and telling me that this palm branch is longer than you are. And I say, she is a liar. Onini the python said, bring it over here and come measure me. Spider took the palm branch and laid it out next to python's body. He said, stretch yourself out. Python stretched himself out, and Anansi took the rope creeper and wound it around. The sound of the tying was nueni, 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 until he reached the head. Anansi the spider said, You fool, I shall take you now to the sky god and receive the sky god's tales in exchange. Anansi took him off to Nyami, and the sky god said, My hand has touched it. But there remains what still remains. Spider returned and told his wife what had happened, saying, There remain the hornets. His wife replied, Look for a gourd. Fill it with water and go off with it. Spider went along through the bush, and when he saw a swarm of hornets hanging in the air, he poured out some of the water and sprinkled it on the hornets. 
Spider then poured the rest of the water on himself and cut a leaf of the plantain and covered his head with it. Then he addressed the hornets, saying, Now that it's raining, you should go into this gourd so that the rain won't beat you down. Can't you see that I've covered myself with this plantain leaf? The hornets replied, We thank you, Aku, we thank you, Aku. The hornets all flew into the gourd and disappeared. Fum! Father Spider covered its mouth, and he said, Fools! I have caught you, and I am going to exchange you for the sky god stories. And he took the hornets to the sky god. The sky god said, My hand has touched them, but there remains what still remains. And so we've begun the story. It's a bit of a quest to find the special items. It reminds me of Into the Woods when the witch sends the baker and his wife out to obtain various things to break the spell of their inability to conceive children. Speaking of Into the Woods, today is the feast day of St. Lawrence the Martyr, and I spent two and a half years at that wonderful parish in Minneapolis, Minnesota, part of the University of Minnesota campus ministry and a parish. I'm wearing its um, emblem when the Paulus Fathers used to be the uh, pastors and leadership of that parish. We no longer are due to our dwindling numbers. But Into the Woods was one of my final uh, events there. I produced and directed it. I have been uh, played a part in it. And it was very, very significant for me, I think, and many people of the parish. It joined parishioners with students. It really was a highlight of my priestly vocation. And it's what inspired me to start my Luke Live program, which has expanded to ministries and retreats on not only the Gospel of Luke in a dramatic way, but resurrection faith and what it means to us on a daily life, on a, a daily basis. And I have another one on St. Paul the Apostle, and I keep playing around. Actually, next week, I'm going to begin with small segments of Luke's Gospel. I'm finally ready to do that for you. So that will also be on my Facebook and YouTube pages. My nephew, Dallas James Reinick, is going to record them with me. So uh, I will be collaborating again a little bit, which is always a good thing for a priest to do to collaborate with the people of God. So thank you so much for joining me. I will continue with this story from African American folk tales uh, throughout the week. And please offer comments, suggestions, anything you like. Meanwhile, I will be back tomorrow. And if you go out today, wear your masks, stay safe, keep healthy, and God bless. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.